Hi there, and welcome to Design Tab. My name is Montague Munro, and in this tutorial we're going to be covering the basics of semantic HTML5 markup. In the past, when you were trying to mark up a document in HTML5, putting headers, content, sidebar, and footers, they would usually be done by giving simple divs, classes, or IDs to determine which one is which. This is still incredibly common today, and you'll find many websites that hold to this convention. However, when HTML5 was brought up, they brought along a variation of uh, tags that basically allowed you to deviate from the standard div class when laying out your semantic HTML markup. So essentially, today we're going to be going through a list of the standard HTML5 semantic elements. <clears throat> we're going to make an example HTML page using these elements, and just generally go through what they do and when to use them as well as why it's good to use semantic HTML5 in your markup. So without further ado, let's go straight into our terminal um, here, and let's make ourselves a new directory in our sites folder. We're just going to name our semantic, and then let's cd into that directory. Alright, so here we are. Now let's open up this folder in our default text editor. Here we are. And we want to create ourselves an index.html file. Mm -hmm. Just go into our semantic folder and index.html. Now we're ready to begin. Let's just put some standard um, bootstrap into our, or boilerplate into our HTML document. Just the HTML tags, a head, a body with a title and we will put in the title semantic html. Now we're ready to begin. So to start with, I will just lay out the main classes, uh, the main elements that we're going to be using today and discuss very briefly what they're for. So the first one we have is the header class. Now the header class usually um, is meant to <laughs> be used to at the heading of a document or also the heading of sections of the document. You can have more than one header class but it's usually used to differentiate the the heading of the actual section you're trying to do. So for, ex for ex uh, example the header of your website would be in the header thing. Also the header of articles would be header tags as well. The next one we have is the nav tag. This is where you put navigations. Um, you don't always need to use navigation, so you don't always need to use the nav tag for navigation elements, but when it comes to your main navigation, it's a good idea to put it in there. The next one we have is section. Now this one is used for sectioning off sections of your website. Um, basically it's for putting in, maybe not the sidebar, there is one specifically for the sidebar, but if you had certain sections of your website, um, sort of splitting them up, you're going to want to use section for that. Alright, the next one we're going to go on to is article. Article is very simple to, is simple to section, except for the fact that articles are meant for things like blog posts, uh, entries, all that sort of stuff. Uh, basically, it's for information that could be taken out and put anywhere else as a standalone and still make sense. So this is generally articles or posts. All right, moving on to the next one. We have a side, and a side is for any sort of side content that is not part of your main con main content area. This is where you would put your sidebar, for example. After that, we have figure and fig caption. What figure is for is where you would put stuff like images, um, video, audio, that kind of stuff. Basically, it just says there's some kind of media or visual object in there. And then fig caption, basically, let me just type this in. Fig caption is usually used as a caption for that image. 
for example, if you wanted to have a caption, you wanted to style it separately, you would put the fig caption inside the figure um, tags like this. Let me just. There we go. And then now that we've done that, we could have our image inside the figure, and below it we'd have the fig caption. We'd have to style that how we like. The last one we're going to go into is the footer. And this is where you do the footer of both your websites or the footer of articles or sections or anything like that. Essentially, it's just an overall footer. <laughs> All right, then. So now we have these. Let's just uh, do a quick example of how we would use them in a standard HTML um, file. So I'm going to go straight ahead and let's start out with our header. And inside that, we would like to have a h1 saying, this is our header. And then inside the header, we might have a navigation for our website. So we'd use the nav. And then we'd have an unordered list with some list items in there like home and about. Perfect. All right, now that we've got them done, let's say we wanted our content area. So we'd have a section. And then, then inside this, we would likely have, um, let's say we're writing a blog, we have a couple of articles. Um, so we'll say article, or we'd go like, give it a heading. And if you wanted, you could put this in a header tag um, so that you could, you know, basically say it's a header of your article. But uh, we're just going to say, leave it like that for now. And then we'd say content. And we have, uh, say, three articles. Perfect. Okay. So now that we have that done, let's say we wanted a sidebar. So we'd use our A side tags. And inside that, we would like a couple of pictures. So we'll say figure. And then we just put an image tag in there. All right, so that's our sidebar done. And last but not least, we'd like to have our footer. And then we'll just say page one. This is our footer. Okay, so having a look at this, compared to using, for example, divs and classes and all that other sort of um, stuff that's fairly commonly used before HTML5 and is still used today, this is a lot cleaner, a lot easier to read, and basically just points out very quickly and easily where things are and what they're for. Um, as far as semantic HTML goes, it's incredibly handy for standardizing HTML as a whole. If everybody followed these conventions, it would be easy to look through other people's work, maybe co-workers' work, or mm, work that you've downloaded, then you'd be able to have a look at it and really quickly get an overview of what things are and why they're there. Another good thing about semantic markup, and another reason why you might be interested in getting into it, is semantic markup gives a higher weight for search engines. So if you're wanting to get your website as high as possible on these search engine rankings, then something you need to pay, pay close attention to is your semantic markup. Alright, that's all we have to cover today. If you're interested in learning more about web design, or just normal graphic design, come take a look at designtab.me. Thank you very much, this has been Montague Monroe, and I hope you have a pleasurable day.